Hey guys, this video is sponsored by Ibble. Make sure you guys download the app, follow me, and talk to me on there. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Blair White Project. Today's guest, I didn't know who she was a week ago, but as of a week ago, I became fucking obsessed. So this is HRH Collection. If you don't know, I feel bad for you. Uh, welcome to the show, Alex. <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? Sorry, I'm sorry if I'm... Anyone who knows me out there knows I can't hear sometimes, so I'm so sorry, but I'll make it work. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be screaming for this episode. That's fine. I can. Um, so I found out about you because I was literally at like one in the morning walking past this gay club and this gay guy comes out of the club and he's like, Blair, and he stops me. He was a fan of my channel and he was like, literally, you need to do a collab with HRH Collection. And I was like, what the fuck is the HRH Collection? I was thinking like, is that H3H3? Right. What is that? Like, what is that? Um. And then I went home and looked you up and I think I just clicked the wrong video or something where it was like literally nothing like anti-woke, nothing like political, whatever. And I was like, how am I similar to her? Because he was saying you guys are so similar. So then I watched a few more and I was like, oh, no, 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 wait, we're actually very similar. <laughs> very yeah. outspoken. Um, so how did you start your channel? And can you just like describe like your vibe and like everything you do? Thank you. Um, my God, I wonder who that was. Obviously, he's like a straight A student. That's what I talk about. Like, my class, everyone I said like, my videos are class and like I'm the teacher and I love it. Um, I don't know. I think it was like during the pandemic. I've always been kind of outspoken and stuff. But then like when the pandemic happened, I just kind of like erupted. And I was like, what the fuck is this fucking crap? What is this bullshit? Why is Period. everyone just like following like whatever the government says? Like, they're like, oh, my God. Yes, sir. Like no one was questioning anything. And if you questioned anything, you were like immediately labeled as who knows whatever they want to label you as. And I was so sick of it living in LA. It was just so gross. So I started calling it out and slowly, but surely people started like agreeing with me. They may not have liked my delivery or whatever, but they're like, she's actually right. You guys. So that's kind of how like this whole me being like anti-woke speaking out started. Right. Yeah. I relate to that because it's like, I have an aggressive way of like saying what I say, but at the end of the day, it's like, what am I really saying that's wrong? You know what I mean? Like, I, I know that I come across like a little bit foul, but so that's why I related to you. I was like, okay, totally. I get it. Like, she's just very outspoken and like, she might yell, but like, that's fine. Um, So yeah. wait, so you lived in Los Angeles during the pandemic and you still live there now? No, so I lived oh. there, I was living in Brentwood and um, basically 20, at the end of 2020, I was like, I'm done with this. I cannot live here anymore. These people are so stupid. Like walking around outside with masks on like getting in fights with people if i didn't have a mask on if i wasn't six feet away like people in cars they're driving their masks on like i was just so sick of seeing this like the overrun of like homeless people like no one's saying yeah. anything like people are like oh my god it's compassionate just leave them alone like what are you talking about it's not compassionate to let people kill themselves on the street like that's actually not compassionate and i was just so sick of this like retardation like what the yeah. fuck are these people's problems like there's something you are sick you're a sick individual if you can't question what the fuck is going on here. Um, but I moved. I ended up moving to Newport. I live here now, but I still have my jewelry line in downtown. So I do a commute like three days a week. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Well, it's much better in Newport. Like I remember like during the pandemic because I was living in Hollywood, which is like literally so disgusting. And it yeah. was like the worst place to be during the Panini, but I was there. And whenever I wanted to like escape, I would go to Orange County, but there were even like times in the thick of it that even Orange County was like so demented. And it was just this weird mentality of like, people all of a sudden feel like they have a right to like control you and a right to like approach you. Like never in my life have I been in a situation where an adult felt comfortable to come up to a perfectly stranger adult and say like, you should oh, do that. Like it was where insane. Yeah, where do they get the balls to do that? And, like I'm not one to not, I, w I don't like confrontation, but I'm not gonna like back down. I will definitely, I will get in a, like in an argument with you in public if you try me, like it bothers me, but that's what happened. People were coming up to me if I didn't have my mask on properly and having the balls to come up to me. Like, Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? You think I'm going to back down? No, I won't. I was getting in fights at the Brentwood Country Mart with these moronic mothers <laughs> and their stupid fucking kids. It was so irritating. I just had to right. get out. But honestly, it's way better in Orange County as far as like not being so woke, but it's still kind of woke sometimes. Yeah, it's still California. That's why I moved to Texas. Yeah. But like, I don't know, even like some parts of Texas, I'm like, sometimes I feel like it's just like a little more basic out here. And it's just kind of like yeah. an adjustment because I'm like, oh, my God, I kind of miss LA in certain aspects. Like I was watching your Instagram story and you were like in Beverly Hills and like getting treatments. And I was like, that's like literally what I did every other day. So I kind of fucking miss it because um, I don't I really I don't even necessarily trust anyone in 
Texas to like do my like treatments and but to be honest like the vibe is gone like if, if you go back yeah. to LA now the the vibe is off like there's LA is not what it used to be it's dirty it's disgusting the, like the vibe the energy is like there's something missing and I don't miss it like I went there yesterday to get my lips done and it was always like in your rodeo it's like a ghost town it's like bad vibes I don't like anything about it like there's no restaurants open they're all yeah. like closed and dark and it's just weird it's because even like- Beverly Hills like you're talking about the homeless shit and it's like even in beverly hills i remember like towards the end of me living there it's like they were creeping their way into beverly hills like the park i'm like how is there homeless people in the park in beverly hills like usually it's like you know not to sound crazy but like they stay around downtown or hollywood or west hollywood but like beverly hills was fucking crazy right in front of like that beautiful big like beverly hills sign they just camp out there they sleep there i mean come on like is there nowhere that's sacred anymore you have to let people just be degenerates everywhere now like these homeless people have chosen to not be a part of a civil society. That was their decision to be who they, to, to choose that life. Okay. To do the drugs, choose that life. And now we have to like live around that self. It's I'm sick of it. No, I won't. And I will talk about it. It's disgusting. That's also like low key how I knew COVID like wasn't that big of a deal. Cause I'm like, okay. So when you live in Hollywood long enough, you recognize the homeless people. Cause like they stay homeless like the whole time you're living there. So like I live there for like five or six years and it's like the same homeless people I saw year one or the same ones I saw like year six. Right. And yeah. I'm like, how are none of them dying? Like if, if these are the I people know. living in the most unsanitary conditions, not that I wanted them to die, but like if these are the people and um, during COVID, none of them are dying either. And that should have been the first thing. Exactly. Exactly. It's like if the people in our population in the most unsanitary conditions, especially in LA on the streets of LA are not dying from COVID, then how am I supposed to li- literally sit here and like be shook in my apartment and like not want to leave because yeah. COVID is just so scary. It's like all the homeless people are still running amok. So what's the actual, right. What's the thing? So are you like anti-homeless? Because I did get like, I, we're going to get to the fan Q- Q&A, um, but there were a few like, is she anti-homeless? Um, yes. Okay. Yes, I'm anti <laughs> Who the fuck is like, I'm pro homeless people. If you, that fucking bitch, <laughs> that fucking question, bitch. Okay. No, um, I'm not anti homeless. Actually, I'm the compassionate one because if you were compassionate, you would vote to have them rounded up and forced to clean up. That is compassion, not letting them kill themselves on the street. It's always some stupid moron who doesn't live in LA, who probably lives somewhere like in the middle of Iowa in like a cornfield in a suburb, girl. On. Right, some more rural. You you never seen this. Come to LA and see how they're killing themselves. They've got gangrene legs, like pus coming out of them. Yeah. They are like zombies. They're aggressive. They're entitled. They're scary. This is not compassion. One hundred percent. And like, I just love how you say shit because yeah, like you're coming across very aggressive. But at the end of the day, like you're correct in the sense that it's not the compassionate yeah. answer to sit there and let them rot as if they're not even human. It's like the people who like I remember like. Every time there's like the Oscars or like an award show, it's like LA finally decides to clean up because like the streets are going to be on camera, which is so like Uh disgusting. That's the only reason they do it. Um, But, you know, it's like that's not the compassionate thing to let them sit there and waste away as if they're like a stray dog or something. Like, so it's like anyone who says. I wouldn't even do that. If we saw um, these these crazy woke fucks, if they saw a dog living like that, they would they would take it into their arms or whatever and put it in the shelter for for it to be safe. But you won't do that for a human. You're telling me I'm like anti-homeless. Yes, I'm anti-people being homeless and shitting on the streets, living on the streets and killing themselves. 100%. Yes, I'm anti that. And isn't it so interesting how like, you know, a woke like white liberal mother will come up to you screaming about not wearing a mask, but like she won't go up to the homeless person. She you know what I dare. mean? She wouldn't dare. Yeah. But that's funny. She should come up to me that because I will I I will be insane. Okay? Come up to me and try me and I will fucking be insane. You will be sorry for doing that to me. They were so sorry for doing that to me in Brentwood. I'm literally so shocked that I didn't end up being one of those like, you know, those like Karen's in the wild videos where it's like, yeah, like people screaming like for someone to know about. I'm like literally so shocked I never ended up on that because I was literally in <laughs> altercations as well. I was getting into an elevator in my building one time and this grown yeah. ass man literally had a face shield and a mask. And, you know, like I'm not waiting for the elevator to go up 70 yeah. stories and then back down again. I'm getting the elevator now. But they're like, oh, one person for elevator. I try to go in and this grown ass man in a mask and a face shield pushes me out physically. And I'm just so, I started like calling him all types of like slurs. I couldn't help it. <laughs> That's a pussy ass beta bitch. Pussy ass beta bitch. That's what so I'm sick. saying. But that was like what was so unbearable. So like, do you ever want to leave California in general because of that attitude? Because it's still there. I would, I mean, I do, but it's like what constantly running from something. I mean, it's yeah. not like where else any other city is going to be anything different. It's all the cities. The cities are all just so fucked. And I have my jewelry line here too. So it's like, I I have to be in California, at least close to LA. But I mean, I don't know. Where where do we go? 
I mean, there's always going to be the woke fucks, but California is so it's California is the worst. It's the worst. One of the worst. It's always a trade off because like I moved to Texas, but now I'm bored. So I'm like, "Mm, I kind of miss LA. Um, So when you talk about fatties, because you're very honest on your channel about like, you know, you give skinny tips. That was a big one. People were asking was like, please have her give us skinny tips. Like you're very honest about the fat acceptance movement. So what are your feelings about the fat acceptance movement? So um, I am allowed to speak of this because I was fat previously. I have, I call it the fat gene. Like I, it takes a lot of, a a lot of effort for me to not be fat. So people have been watching me for 10 years or so. They know I was fat. I lost weight. Like, so anyone who has any questions about me being saying something about fat people, yes, I can talk about it because coming from damn experience, it's laziness and bad decisions. That's all it is. This crap now about like, uplifting the people who are fat or like putting them on a pedestal or saying they're beautiful. No, they're not. You guys are lazy, unhealthy. It's detrimental to this, to society. You're lying to them. They're miserable. And I'm, this is coming from a place that I can speak of because I was once fat. Okay. How fat were you? I, I was like 185 pounds. And how tall are you? Five, six. Yeah. So that's like, that. yeah, that's fat. It's fat. Okay. Let's get over it. Like it's fucking fat. Okay. And I'm so sick of people. It's not like, Tess Holiday fat, you know what I mean? Right. But it's, yeah. It's fat. By the way, she's anorexic, which is insane to me. <laughs> I, <laughs> when, she's she anorexic. Out, when she came out as anorexic, I was like, bitch, <laughs> maybe you should be. I mean, that sounds crazy, but maybe you should be. It's, it's crazy. Like, I honestly cannot stand this craziness anymore. <laughs> like, I'm sick of it. It makes me sick. Um, yeah. So everyone knows that I, like, I always say, like, it's, there's, there's truth like there's truth there's not truth like you should not eat after eight everyone knows that if you're trying to lose weight if you have like the fat gene like me and it's like you just have a struggle in life about keeping weight off you shouldn't eat anything after eight there's no reason to eat right before you go to bed the calories are sitting inside of you and yes it's all about the fucking calories you fat ass okay calories in calories out if you're not working out you don't need to eat that many calories like that's it period it's not starving it's just called math it's simple math but you know, also people can't do math. Like people are usually like too stupid to even do math. You know what I mean? But that's how I also know that it is a choice because like I also have like the fat gene in the sense that like a lot of people uh-huh. in my family are fat and like I'm the only yeah. one to like get out and like have a good body and like be like, you know, into fitness and all that. And I'm like, well, they could have done it too. Yeah. But you know, people just have like every excuse in the world. And it's just so crazy how like everyone wants to be such a victim and so oppressed and some part of some like group that it's like never in a million years would you think that like being fat would make you part of a group? Like, why are you part of a group being fat? That's like weird. Yeah. Oh my God, because they can sit there and they can give each other like, they can make bad decisions together and no one's gonna judge them for it. Right, like I understand being fat, but I don't really understand being like in like a fat group. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what? Why does that make you it's like, like part of a group? Food friends, like your fat food friends who like go to like Chili's and you order the fuck you want. No one's gonna judge your ass, and you all like eat food and like just become to be fat. Like, <laughs> not Chili's, bitch. Oh my god, I I, I cannot eat at Chili's. I love Chili's. Are you kidding me? Wait, you love Chili's? Yes, I love Chili's. I I will never go. I haven't been in ten years because it's so fattening. But yes, I love Chili's. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is Denny's that I don't go to, but I wish I could go to like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so you obviously have not always been as outspoken you are with like the politics and like anti-woke shit or whatever. Um, but now that you are, have you noticed like, did your audience completely take to it? Or were there some that were like, actually I'm out or like, what was the reaction? Like, I don't over time? care. Like my business has grown Thank so you. much over since I've stopped caring about what people like, you know, say or whatever. And it's like, it's almost like a cleaned house. Like I have a lot of like way more loyal, like honest fans and I, they want to watch me. They I don't need to be careful. I can be honest. I'm not saying like anything absolutely insane. I'm not like a Nazi or something like that. You know what I mean? That's what they're painting me out to be. I'm just speaking the truth. Um, so yeah, no, I'm glad if you don't like, I'm so happy that the crazy wokes, if they're not there, they still watch though. They can't, they can't resist. Yeah. They can't stop. They like love to hate. Yeah, exactly. They love it. And it's like, they're my biggest fans. So they keep posting things trying to get me canceled. It just goes viral and I get bigger. So thank you. That's also their whole ideology though, right? Cause like at the end of the day, it's like people like in my opinion, like everyone is kind of like a projection. Like they love to project what they aren't. So like they'll sit there and talk about how their ideology is so accepting and so loving and so tolerant. And they're like the main hateful ones. So it's like they will keep watching and they will keep leaving, leaving hate comments and they just can't stop. Whereas you're right. It is cleaning house when you're honest. It's like just as much as like building an audience is important. I also feel like, you know, 
alienating the correct people is important. Like when you just say what you feel, and so people who can't handle it know that they're not going to be there. You know what I mean? So they just leave you alone. I don't around anyway. Like they're the rats. I call them the rats in the back of the class. Get the fuck out of my class. Get the fuck off of my page. I don't want you here anyway. I think I give a fuck about your dumbass being here. Bye. Like no, I don't. And exactly. it's like the whole thing too is they're going to end up eating their own. It's like the way they try to cancel us. You don't think that they're going to start canceling each other one day. They always end up eating their own. Like all of their bullshit about silencing people. It's not just us. Like they're going to silence other. It's going to all like combust one day and explode. Like it's not only going to be us but whatever 100% we'll and it's like Plenty I do feel time. like the bullying tactics are like not working as well because like you said you started being outspoken in 2020 it's like that was when it was like the worst that was when like you yeah. couldn't speak out you know what I mean and now I feel like people are kind of like seeing through the charades and they're like wait actually what right. the, who the fuck are these like insane people running the world yeah. by bullying and that's what they do is they bully um totally it's like the, they come and then it's like the people who say they're so into body positivity but they come on my page and say oh my god you're the you're so fat, ugly, old, but they're exactly. the ones, you know, for sure, who are like the woke. Like, oh my god, I have all like the fat friends. They say how 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 gorgeous their fat friends are, but they come on my page and they tell me I'm fat and ugly. Bitch, get the fuck off my page. Exactly. It's only when it's them. You know what I mean? It's like different roles for different mm-hmm. people. I love what you say about how like you like literally hate everyone and how you're like anti collectivist. Like you're just like yeah. you do your own thing. You're I not do. part of a group. That's how I am too. Like I literally I hate everyone. Um, I do. So. But that like really made me like you because I was like, okay, so even though she's doing like the anti woke shit, like low key, like right wing stuff, it's like she's not like part of like the fucking right wing, whatever. And oh, it's I like, hate that. yeah, no, I hate it. exactly. No, I fucking can't stand it. Like, people are like, it, I cannot stand like the woke bitches who are like, I love all the gays, I love all the trans, <laughs> like trans gays, everything, right? Fuck no, I don't. It's like, I do you like, really? No. Like, even don't they don't exactly no, i don't give a fuck if you're gay straight whatever the fuck you are i like you for you as an individual like i am I, that is the worst thing about these disgusting woke bitches these usually like woke white women who i hate so much they're the so worst annoying, who are like i guys love all the gays i love all the gays what do you mean you love all the gays they fucking hate you first of all okay why don't you like them for them as an individual you fucking pandering bitch exactly and it's also so demeaning it's like do you think gay men are like your fucking puppies like but that's but that goes back to what their ideology actually is they view like black people as like their pawns their pets they view gay people as their pawns their pets they don't actually see them as real people they just see them as like a group that they can control and have dominion over because that's what their actual attitude is like the same thing with the black owned business i talk about all the time like supporting black owned business just because you're black you're fucking racist if you are supporting someone based on just their skin color you're the fucking racist and you're an idiot you should be supporting someone because you like their product you like their exactly. food you like what they say not about their damn skin color you fucking racist yeah it's fucking crazy and then you open like postmates and it's like house at the top it's like um oh, yeah. order food from like black owned restaurants or whatever and i'm like first of all actual racists who have the app are probably gonna look at that and be like okay i would never so you're probably canceling out like actual business and then also shouldn't the food just speak for itself just like your jewelry speaks for itself you don't have to be like i'm a woman owned jewelry line it's like oh my yeah. god i hate that the women own business thing too. I can't stand it. Yeah, because it's like, why can't women just own a business and just like be? We're not victims. Like maybe we were, we, you know, like back in the fucking forties or whatever, the fifties, you know, whatever it was harder for us. But now we're all the same. No one gives a shit if you're gay or if you're a woman or if you're black. Like maybe two people out of twenty fucking thousand. Okay. Right. You know, we're not. No one's a victim anymore. This is the United States. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You can be whoever the fuck you want. And the only person that it's just so annoying. It's I can't stand the pandering. I hate it too. I really do. But so yeah. then, so you probably don't like feel like you fit in with like right wing people either. That's how I feel as well, obviously. Yeah. Cause like one, I'm a fucking tranny. So how could I really ever fit the fuck in? But also like, right. you know, it's just so, I think you said this in a recent video. It's just like, it's so fucking boring on that side. Like there's no like energy. There's no art. There's no like fun or color. It's like it's all like the right wingers are boring. Yeah. Yeah like dorky like church i love i love god so much but like it's dorky churchgoers like yeah like it doesn't and then they're also very mean a lot of these right wing like church going bitches always come for me and they're like you don't love god because you use those bad words about him like get the fuck off my page you two i don't give a fuck if you're conservative Seriously. or right wing or anti whoop you're a fucking psycho bitch and i want you gone too like they're just as bad mm-hmm. i don't like any kind of haters because they're just like because they're also just like a different form of collectivists like they're just in another group it's like they want you to to adhere perfectly to what they are and like i i agree that's like so weird and i also think it's not like a winning strategy to have like this rigid like atmosphere on your side which is like the right-wing side of like 
I'm no. sorry. The reason the left wins is because they own all of art, all of culture, all of music, all of the entertainment industry. It's like, and the right is hung up on like, well, you know, HRH, like, you know, she swears or like Blair's a fucking tranny. It's like, who cares? It's like, if someone's saying yeah. the correct shit and they're just being honest, then like, that's all should matter. But they get too Actually, caught up too. right wing should like, be thankful for people like you and me who aren't like the cookie cutter, dorky, yeah. church going, right wing, like typical nerd. We are like the cool ones and we're like, we're being honest and real and we're showing, we're like, we're actually putting ourselves out there with truth. So actually we should be fucking put on a damn pedestal. No one should come for us at all. And I guarantee you that like, cause I know this is true about me and I know true about you because really there's no one else doing like, who outside of like you and I is like doing like fun, like anti-woke shit. Like no one really is, like literally yeah, no one. They're too scared. It bothers me, they're too scared. I have a lot to lose. I had my jewelry line before I did any of, any of this. So when I was decided to start speaking out, I was like, hey, I'm like at risk of losing 50% of my audience. Right. And there's, I have nothing. I don't come from a rich family. I come from nothing. And I, I was willing to like lose it all just because I have that kind of temperament where I will say what's right. But there's so many people who have like huge lines that come from a ton of money. Like you guys have nothing to lose. Start speaking out. I know there's yeah. so many people like who have nothing to lose. You guys are, are, are literally are worth 20 mil at this point. Just fucking say the truth and like try to wake people up and they won't. They're that like much of a push, push over bitch. It bothers me. For real. And it's like, you know, I love money. Like I love the pursuit of money. Like obviously I want to be wealthy in my life and like, you know, I'm financially successful. So I want to maintain that. But at the same time, it's like, is money that important that you like set aside like all of your morals and everything you want to say right. you watch the whole world oh. go to shit and also like if you're a public figure it's like you have you know supporters who are like living in this world of shit and it's like you could help it be not so shit and you're not going to do that because yeah. what you don't want to sell like one more piece of fucking jewelry or something like i don't get it like the i have like a very big gay following because i always say that i feel like i'm trans i always am trans gay because i hate like i hate women and i love gay boys more like i just feel like i like just I mesh with them way better, whatever. Um, and I'm waking a lot of them up. Like a lot of them, I get so many DMs and emails being like, oh my God, Alex, like I was such an idiot. I've like dropped so many of my friends because they're such leftist like lunatics. I'm so tired of it. So a lot of the gay boys are, are waking up and I love it because they're smart, they're motivated. They like want the yes. finer things in life. I love them. And like, I'm just so happy that there are a lot of them are waking up to not be these leftist retards anymore. Right, because it's like, it's not 2001 anymore. There's no reason yeah. to literally be a lefty when like even like the majority of people on the right support gay marriage. It's like, why are you going to continue being a leftist as if it's like 1998 and you have to fight for your rights all over again? Like you have your rights now, move on. Yeah. Yeah, it's totally changed. And like the whole thing about like the the right wing, like not wanting you to like take, take your marriage rights away. It's not true. It's not going to happen. Okay, like get over it. Right. Like literally, I don't think you can even find like two people to sit in a room and like really debate that issue. You know what I mean? It's like everyone, right. no one cares. So it's I, done. 100 percent. So I want to do some like Q&A from the fans because I did okay. post that I was filming with you and everyone was like, first of all, so excited. People were like posting little stories like, oh, my God, finally. You know what I mean? It's really fun when you can like link up with someone who like people want you to link up with because like, yeah, you know, people just get so excited. So let's see. Um, let's see what they said. Hopefully there's no rat. Right. <laughs> there was a few rats, but we can handle them. You know what I mean? Okay, good. We can, we can uh, what's the word? Um, extinguish them? Yeah, we exterminated them. Exter we can exterminate the rats, yeah, yeah. Exterminated, definitely. <laughs> right. So do you notice a trend amongst the people that hate on you the most? And how do you shut it out? So is there like a common like thread between like people who like the rats? I'm sorry, you cut out. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. This person says, or Emma says, do you notice a trend amongst the people that hate you the most? And how do you shut it out? Do I notice a trend um, about people who hate me the most? And how do I shut it out? Yeah, like anything that like they all have in common. In common, yeah. Um, to be honest, they're always ugly and poor. Yes. And always, and like they're usually fat. So they're just like jealous and they're miserable. And I've already always told them like, it's always the fat, ugly, and poor people who are just losers and they're jealous of you. So they have nothing else to do other than come on your page, waste their time, because they're not focusing on themselves. Yes. They're not focusing on their weight, their bank account, or how ugly they are, which they should, but they don't. So they focus all on me, and that's the truth. I 100% agree. Like, I literally, like, I don't think I've ever gotten a hate comment or had anyone make, like, a oh, hate I video from, like, a pretty person. Never, because we're too busy, like, focusing on ourselves. Right. And also, like, I have this philosophy. Tell me if you agree. Like, I feel like no one's like, like, yeah, there are ugly people. But like, I also feel like ugly is a choice too. like being fat yeah. is a choice because you're like, unless like obviously rare conditions, whatever. But like, for the most part, it's like a choice. I feel like being ugly is too, because it's like you can you can work hard and get a look together. Like even ugly people can get a oh, look really? together. 
Oh my God, totally. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to have that much money to look cute. Like you're just, yeah. Yeah, you can always put some sort of look together. Like even if you're like, there are people that like are disfigured, but like they have like a look or like it's you can work true. hard and get surgery. And, yeah, and there's even like ugly models, but they make themselves pretty. There's a vibe to them. They like get it together. Yeah, I love what you say about like having a vibe because I feel like that's like literally 90% yeah. of being attractive. Um, and the second part was how do you shut out the hate? Um, I, I love the hate. They like do my PR for free. They talk right. about like, I literally have employees you guys are working for me for free. So actually, I really appreciate it. I love the hate. You guys are like my biggest fans. You talk about me. So it's like, it's so funny. I was doing like this, um, this interview and the person who was interviewing me was like, you know, it's crazy. I interview celebrities. I, I don't see as much hate on celebrities as I do on you. Like there is, there's so much about you, all this like crazy hate about you online. I was like, I know, I don't know. They just can't stand me, but I'm, I'm good with it. I love it. Well, people don't like honesty, you know what I mean? And also like, you're so right yeah. because it's like, it's the same with me. It's like, people will post like, oh my God, Blair White did this. Like, like yesterday I posted like a video showing off all my guns. And there was like all these tweets being like, oh my God, I can't believe Blair has like, you know, colorful guns that's so fucked up. And it's like, oh you're God. quote tweeting my tweet linking to my video and you don't understand thank that you're you. amplifying it by like 50 times. It's like, thank you for the clicks. I'm gonna go buy There's another so gun stupid. with the money. Like period, <laughs> they're really fucking stupid. Um, Sylvia. I wonder if she's old. That's like a really old name. I never seen an old name Sylvia. Like, what <laughs> she said, is she actually so intense in real life? So are you as intense in real life as you are in videos? I don't think you're intense. Or, or I guess you kind of are. Um, yeah. I mean, it seems to be like a little weakling like that. Probably like, oh my God, she's like that intense. I can't take her. Um, no, I don't walk around like the streets yelling and screaming like a fucking homeless person, which she probably adores. Um, but if you like try me, if you try me, if you piss me off, like don't think that I'm not going to like be combative with you or if I'm really passionate about something that's just how it comes out right like I can't imagine you ever like really getting that intense unless someone put, tell you to put a mask on which is like then it's warranted you know what oh, I mean fuck that. like fuck that <laughs> um Gabby says why are you both so pretty for me it's plastic surgery but you can tell them mm -hmm. your answer um for me it's not plastic surgery honestly um, because I focus on my damn self and I am very self-aware. If there's a problem, I rectify it. If I'm fat, I fix it. If my lips are ugly, I fix them. I don't fucking waste my time going on people's pages. I fix myself because that's all that matters is me. Right, exactly. But that goes back to like, I feel like being ugly is like, you can work on it. It's not like it's a death sentence. You're not stuck being ugly. Right. You know what I mean? You can tweak things as much as you want here and there. Right. Um, this person says, have you ever been attacked by a they, them rat in real life? No, I haven't actually. Um, people are like very nice. I, yeah, no, I have not. I saw that you, someone threw something in your fucking face. Oh my God, that was so old. But yeah, I was wearing a Trump hat on Hollywood Boulevard and someone threw wine in my face. It was so fucking crazy. Oh my God. And you just, what did you do? Nothing? I saw you like, I think shocked. I like cried. I know. I'm but so I was so, but I was so young. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, oh my God. Like now I probably would have thrown hands, but I was so young. No, I think you know? I would go to jail. I really think yeah. I would go to jail. Like, I wouldn't be, no, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Don't fucking know. Right. Oh, that leads me to another question that I want to ask you. Do you support Trump or like, what's your thoughts on like Trump? Like, do you want him to run? I'd like, like to bring up like, um, who I like names, really. I just think that people need to do their own research. And yeah. um, I don't like to affiliate myself with any because I don't want like to actually, I'm not like a political person. I don't like to be a political person. So I don't want to say vote for Trump, vote for Biden. I'm just going to like call out the stupidity of what's going on. Yeah, it's not about people for me. It's about like ideas yeah. and concepts and like what's right and what's wrong. Like, it's really and not about people friends like don't listen to your stupid fucking friends and yeah. like oh go vote like actually don't vote i always say people are like oh my god go vote no actually fucking retard don't <laughs> vote unless right. you know unless you know what you're voting for don't fucking vote Right. That's what I never get. It's like all these celebrities and like people again, like when you're talking about people with like nothing to lose, it's like, why are you doing, first of all, they're paid, but like, why are you doing all these like go vote shit? It's like, do you really think everyone's qualified to vote? Do you really think everyone no. has the mentality like needed to go into a booth and vote? It doesn't make any fucking sense. No. And they don't even ask for your ID. It's like you could vote for anything. It doesn't even matter anymore. Oh, yeah, the, thing, the, the no ID thing, because it's like racist, apparently, if you ask for an ID to vote. Right, but they can have you um, take a shot to enter like a bar, which is like, what, what oh, is yeah. that? What is I that? I know. Oh, my God. Like, where do they do that at? That's a good point. I never thought of that. That's so bad. It's so disgusting. It's like, um, hi, you have to get a shot to come in here, but you don't have to show an ID. Yeah. Like, what is this? Like, literally Cuba? Like, where do they do that at? Um. Huh. How do you deal with the constant clown worlds? The constant what? Clown worlds, especially out oh there. My. 
Well, I, this is why I love, I love like my videos. I love coming on YouTube and like calling everyone out. Um, I love the feedback I get. So I feel like that's how I like, that's how I like kind of release the how, how upsetting everything is, is like during class on YouTube, I like can call out all the fucking dumb ass woke rats. The they them pieces of shit, I call them. <laughs> For real. Um, there yeah, was someone they, who left one comment in particular on the Q&A and like I blocked them because it was literally just so gross. It was like, um how do you both deal with being so fucked up and ugly? And I looked and it was literally a he, they. Like he had he and they. I'm like, why are you a he, they? It doesn't make any sense. I was like, like <laughs> a fucking girl wearing a she, her pin. Like, what are you, stupid? Like, obviously, right? dumb shit. It's like, it, it doesn't make any sense. And of course it was just like a white like guy. Like it wasn't like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like a situation where it's like, oh, I don't know by looking at you or whatever. Even that's annoying, but it's like, okay, it wasn't yeah, like that. Right. It's it like, together, okay? it's like pick a, pick a lane, get a look, do your I'm thing. I'm not gonna sit here and try to dissect whether or not you're a guy or a girl. Like if you look like a girl, you're a girl. If you look like a guy, you're a guy, period. Leave no, that's, that's it. You wear a fucking button. That's literally how it works. Like literally how it works. Yeah. Um, is it true that Alex never edits her photos? I mean, I'm not really like a little bit here and there, obviously yeah. like, I'll go brighten my eyes or like, but, but I'm on YouTube. I'm looking ugly as shit all the time. Like, no, I don't edit my photos. I love a face soon. I don't even care. Like I love a face soon. <laughs> um, why would she rather have a gun than the right to an abortion? What does that even mean? Why would she rather have a gun? Um, because why would I rather have a gun than a right to an abortion? This is so stupid. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> totally two different things. Like, what are you fucking talking about? Um, <laughs> it is two different things, bitch. Like, what are they talking about? You're gonna kill your baby. You're gonna kill a, like a potential life, or have a gun that doesn't do anything other than sit on a counter. What? <laughs> right. People are like literally about? so demented. Um, someone named Ralph wants to know what are her thoughts on Andrew Tate. He seems like that's her type of man. Yeah, I don't really know much about him. I just know that he's been shut down from everywhere. And that's like me too. Like this is my fifth Instagram account. I get shut down on TikTok all the time. Why do you um, get banned off Instagram so much? The last one was because I took a picture of my new Glock and they shut me down for guns. And I saw you have like a picture of a, like there's, I always say there's a fat bitch at Instagram who works there who hates yeah. me. That's what it is. I'm a thousand percent <laughs> sure it's a fat ass. To totally. Well, there's um, no way she's skinny. She would never be. She's a fat ass bitch. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, that's why I got shut down. But I forgot the question. Uh, Andrew Tate. Oh yeah. Um, people like are like, who's the one girl who would end Andrew Tate? And they like are saying it's me. But I've seen like some things he's talking about. I I don't I haven't looked at him enough. But the stuff I've heard him say, it's truth. Right. And I think. Is that why he was shut down? Because he's speaking the truth? Like, I don't know. You know what's so crazy about that is like, so I hear a lot about like how Andrew Tate is fucked up, but I never see like actual examples. You know what I mean? But it's kind of the same thing as like you and me. People are like, oh, Blair White is, is this and this and this and HRH is this and this and this. Like, can you yeah. give examples or are you just trying to write someone off and be like a cancel culture little rat? Same. They say I'm racist because I th think that the black owned business thing, supporting black owned business based on your skin color is racist. So I'm like the racist because I call that out. Like, I'm racist. I'm homophobic. I'm everything. Like I'm everything. It's so stupid. I mean, they call me transphobic exactly. and I'm a fucking tranny. Like they don't have to make sense. They, they're so comfortable. <laughs> they're so comfortable being deranged that they don't even recognize like what it is to not be deranged. You know what I mean? It's like right. that whole mentality is just like it's like, poison. Um, let's see. Will your jewelry line be expanding and selling through other stores in the future? Um, I was like at Kitson. I don't for a while. I mean, we hand make all the jewelry at the off at my office, so it's not like I have like a mass production kind of thing going on. I and I I'm afraid about being put in stores because I don't want to be like the whole cancel thing. Like the one the moment they find out that I'm anti woke, right. I feel like they'd pull me from the shelves anyway, and I don't want to deal with that. So yeah, yeah. And then that's a whole nightmare. It's like, why even deal with that? Yeah, I don't want to deal with your bullshit, so. Yeah, just be like fucking like, you know, every, a lot of people do like direct to consumer like online and are hugely successful. Like look at like Kylie Cosmetics. That's how she became like, you know. Exactly. That's yeah. what we do. Right. Um, Nadine says, why do you hate fat people? And are you like traumatized for being fat in the past? Pretty much. Yeah. Like I am traumatized from being fat. I I, I am fat phobic for myself. People say you're fat phobic. No, I'm not fat phobic for you. You can do whatever you want. You're unhealthy, miserable, and like you're not pretty. But like I am fat phobic for me 
And when I see fat people, it makes me uncomfortable because I know that feeling you're not, you don't feel good. You don't, you're not healthy. It, you're, you're not happy. I'm, I'm positive all this. Okay. And it's not comfortable to walk around with extra weight on you. It's just very uncomfortable. So yeah, no, it's not like I'm fat phobic or whatever, but I, yeah, I am traumatized from my creep from me being fat. I never want to be fat again. It's really difficult. Yeah, that's kind of like, you know, like I got a nose job and before like my nose was literally so huge and like when I think about it, it's traumatizing. Like I don't want to have a huge nose. Like I like having a cute little button nose. Thank you, my surgeon. Like I would like you see someone with a big nose, you're like, oh my God. I <laughs> and I start convulsing and then sometimes I pass out and like one time I hit my head and I started bleeding. It was crazy. Um, <laughs> um and you, but you know what's so funny about the fat shit is like you know, people like whenever they like lose a bunch of weight, that's when they want to admit that they were so miserable and so unhappy. It's like, yeah, you probably should just admit that while you're that because it'll help you get there faster. It's like they go through this whole thing. Like, yeah, I was being fake. Yeah, I was like lying to everyone that I felt beautiful. It's like, just be honest now, you know? Right. I know. And just just take care of it. Just I mean, you ha it's going to take a while, but you'll be so much happier. Oh, my God. It's like the best. It's the best not being fat. Right. And like get a nose job if you like need a nose job. Yeah, get a um, nose job. Yeah, 100 exactly. percent. <laughs> Um, what were you like in high school and were you bullied for being overweight at that time? Yeah, I was fat in high school too. So I've been fat like twice in my life oh. and I was like, didn't have any friends. I was like bullied and, um, I hated everyone and it stemmed from me being fat. Like I was fat and I had like my wall up, my guard up. I was very like defensive and it all stemmed from me being fat. Right. So, yeah. I was in high school. Yeah. Um, oh my God, these are like all about fatties. Um, <laughs> what do you... <laughs> Um, what do you think about fat people wearing your jewelry as if they are cute? Okay, this is a fair question. And I, that's the thing. I know you guys say, I, it's not that I hate fat people. I don't hate fat people. I told you that. I was fat. And that's why with my line, I've had my line for like 10 years. I, when I was fat, I made, I can make jewelry like any that fits any kind of person. And that's like, I love that about jewelry. When I was fat, I was able to wear jewelry to so make me feel pretty. So I love making jewelry for people of all sizes. Right. Um. So it's not, I don't feel any type of way about, fat people wearing my jewelry i just think that it's better to be thin because you'll be happier and then also like just because you are fat it's like doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to like accessorize your outfit like right. you should probably well, dress for your right now but hopefully you lose the weight and you're not fat but like you should still be pretty when you're or, like go out and look as good as you can yeah like were you not gonna wear bracelets because you're fat like why does that make any fucking yeah. sense <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> this person says do you aspire to be a right wing commentator? Like keep like make that like one of your like things. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know where my career will take me. I feel like I'm one of the only ones like maybe you and me who are like, sp like pretty girls speaking out. Like, you know what I mean? I, I don't know if, if my, if my life leads me to something, then it will. I don't, I'm just, I can't believe people want to hear my anti woke stuff. And like, it's like everyone, like bright, I was on Breitbart, I was on Prager U, I was on all these big, you know, because there's no like cool person, like yeah. you and I, we're like the, the cool factor in this like, you know, anti-woke, right-wing thought kind of thing. We're like the only ones. Um, yeah, so like who's cool? Like Ben Shapiro, like get out of here. Yeah, I think about, like I'm not, and I'm never gonna be like the typical right-wing person because yeah. I, I'm more, I'm definitely more like a libertarian independent because I think everyone should do them. Like, if you want to get an abortion, get an abortion, but you should know what the fuck you're doing. And let's be, let's be honest about what you're doing. Okay. You are ending a life, period. That's it. Like you have to own it, but do what you want. It's your life. You know what I mean? That's not me. Like I'm, I'm out, but like, so I'm not the typical conservative kind of thinker. Yeah, you're not. And that's what makes you actually more interesting and like more fun to listen to because like literally... I don't know, like, look at other, like, women commentators that are, like, more on the conservative side. It's like, I'm sorry, but they're fucking boring. Like, who would boring. ever... And you can tell because no one actually watches them. Like, they get, like, a thousand views per thing. It's like, no one actually fucking cares. Yeah. Um, they're what, not real. They're scared. It's annoying. Like, go away. Because, you know, in real life, they're, like, way more fun, probably. But then on camera, yeah. they're like, oh, my God. You know, it, it's just so stupid. Some. Um, What are your top three tips for being skinny? Okay. Top three tip, tips for skinny is 1,200 calories a day only and like document every single thing you eat. Don't eat after eight. Um, and download the Lose It app. The Lose It app. Okay. The Lose It app. It's like the one that tracks all of your calories and everything, but like it just keeps you so accountable. 
Okay, all the fatties in the chat, download, <laughs> lose it. They won't. They won't. They won't. They won't. <laughs> they won't. They'll, always be fat. They'll always be fat. They'll always be fat. Oh, your camera just went out. Oh, it's back. Yeah. Wait. Okay, it's back. Hold on. It's like cutting out a little bit. Literally, what happened? Okay, it's back now. It's back now. It's back now. Um, who are your favorite YouTubers that you actually watch? I I don't watch. Me I don't watch really anything. Like, I don't have time for that. You know, I do like TikTok here every once in a while, like Instagram. Um, I don't watch YouTube really, YouTube really. And everyone's like so fake and like phony yeah. anyway. I, I just, ew, like. I didn't even know YouTube was still a thing. I think I'm the only one on there. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm the only one that matters. You're the only one. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> what is the hardest part of owning your own business? It's not hard because I love it. It's like, it's like there's some people who can own a business and there's some people who have to work for someone. Like I could never work for someone. Whenever I work for someone in the past, it always get written up. I get like, you know, it wasn't good. I cannot be told what to do. I have to like yeah. love what I do. So my owning a business is like, it's me. And I, it's not like work. It's just me. Yeah, I, I so feel that we're literally so similar. Cause like literally before um, becoming like an influence or whatever, I hate that like title, but whatever. Um, I had like one real job at a clothing store and uh -huh. <clears throat> they couldn't get me to do anything, girl. Like literally if it came to like getting clothes off the wall with like the hook, you know how you get like clothes from, yeah. I, I would just be like, I don't want to do it. Like I literally just say, I don't want to do it. Right, but I was like a little like, gay boy back then and so like all the like um women working there were like fag hags so like they thought yeah. it was funny that i was so rude but i was like i'm genuinely just being rude i'm not trying to be funny uh -uh. but <laughs> but that's how like white liberal women are it's like yeah. you know they just laugh at anything they're that's so stupid too. like i couldn't like i could i cannot be told what to do and if i don't want to do it i won't do it so i have to just work for myself yeah exactly well listen i think this is like all the q a oh no no, no this one's a really really good one um do okay. you have any advice on how to find a real man and what are the traits of a real man Okay. So there are so many beta fucks out there. It's like so hard, right? Like everyone in LA is basically a beta fuck. And I, my tip is to whatever it is that you want, like how I found my current husband, I was married before I hated him, got divorced. I have a new husband now. I was on Facebook and I went on like groups that I like, like I always say, like, say that you really love like dogs, go on like a dog group in like in your town and start talking to people on there and that's how it's just, i just found him on this group about because what group it was people are like oh my god she found him on like an insurrection group or something <laughs> <laughs> and so what and what if i did exactly you know I mean? and what? exactly, bitch, exactly. <laughs> um but yeah so i love my husband he's like he's totally alpha he's like a guy's guy he's like so affectionate it's amazing i like i i feel so lucky every single day that i found him because I, it was exactly what I've been looking for that I didn't have in the past. But I think that's a really great, I always give that tip is to like organically find a group on Facebook that you like. That's how I found mine and it worked. Because it's like organic. You're not like trying to like go on Hinge or whatever, you know? Right. Like imagine being literally on Tinder. Like honestly, I can't think of anything more cringe than literally like no. sitting there and like setting up a Tinder profile. And like the, to me, that's just very thirsty. Like I would never... Right thirsty oh my god this is different where you're like, kind of like making friends you're in your group and like you see someone who's like making points that you like or whatever exactly. you know what I mean? is any, you already found someone with something in common on that on that group exactly i think dating so apps are literally so cringe and, and facebook is too but facebook groups are cool i guess um yeah so what's next for you like how far do you want to take everything do you want to be a fucking like like what's 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 next in the hrh world because now that i'm a fan it's like i want to know like what's coming I don't know. I mean, I have like, I just do what I want. Like, right. you know, I do like, I want, sometimes I design clothes. Sometimes I design jewelry. Sometimes like it's right now I'm really busy with like podcasts and going on people's shows. Um, the line's always really busy. I just had my like Labor Day promo. At, my promos that do really, really well. So we're really, really busy right now, but there's always something new coming up. It's just like kind of whatever I feel. I don't have plans. Like if I want like new gold chains that I want, I have like a design in my head, I'll design them. I don't have I'm totally like not a normal designer or like business owner. I do what I want when I want. And when I feel something I do when I don't, I don't. That's so the vibe. That's like literally how I yeah. live my entire life. It's like, I don't know. I'll wake up tomorrow and decide like I'll Same. figure when it out tomorrow. tomorrow. Like That's how I am. And yeah, I've had to have like my my right hand girl, Judy, who I work with. She's like I've, she's been with me for seven years. She's had to like learn like we don't plan things. We just wake up one day and right. we feel like 
yeah and it's it always works out for me and that's how i've always conducted my business so I think that's the best way to do it. And that's just like yeah. life in general, you know, but people get so caught up in like what you're supposed to do, in my opinion, like people get so caught up in like, this is the path and this is what you're supposed to do. And that's how you end up like living a really shitty life. It's like trying to right. emulate someone else's path rather than like, you know, I'm going to wake up and I'll decide how the day is going to go that day. And if I decide midday, it's going to go differently. That's how it's going to go. Like, that's just how I've always totally. been. Um, Absolutely. Me. Yeah. So listen, thank you so much for coming on the show. This was literally one of my favorite episodes ever. Thank You're such a vibe. You. Thank you so much. And let everyone know where they can follow you, especially your Instagram, because they do keep shutting you down. Yeah, the Instagram is the real HRH collection. I'm shut down all the time. It's like my fifth account. Um, so just follow me there. And then my website for jewelry is shophrh.co. And then on YouTube, I am HRH collection. Sick. Thank you so much, Alex. Talk soon. Thank you so much. Nice Bye. to meet you. Bye.